Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Kelly Bauman, the Five Oaks Kids Director, and I just wanted to come to you today and just share with you some encouragement. As I know we're all going through some challenges, or most of us, who are definitely not used to homeschooling. And I myself am in that boat. Uh, my kids attend a public school normally, and even though they're older and able to do most of the work by themselves, there are still definitely some challenges that we're running into. And so I just have a list of some ideas that you could use or not. Um, and hopefully we can just inspire you to just keep moving forward and doing your very best as that's all that we can really basically do. Um, but we do have a few ideas that you could hopefully put in place. And, um, and I hope these can be helpful for you. So the first idea that we have for you is to create some sort of structure. Um, we just know in general that kids do a lot better when there is a schedule. Um, it's not always easy, especially during these times. It feels like it's been an extended spring break and we're all just on like a spring break schedule. But if you can get your kids um, still like a regular sleep schedule and have like a structured time of when they do basic activities, it doesn't have to be super rigid. I mean, the great thing is like if you know your kid was having a terrible night of sleep, um, you have the option to let them sleep in now, which you wouldn't have in the past. So, um, so things like that are great to take advantage of. But in general, having some sort of schedule um, does really help out just just kids in general and helps everybody stay on task and doing what they should be doing. The second idea that we have for you is to set up some sort of classroom space. So just have an area that's designated as a classroom area where they're going to be doing their activities and having all the things they need there the start of the day so that they're not, you know, taking a lot of breaks to run and find um, their favorite eraser or things like that, that they know where they're supposed to be and there's a specific area for them to be doing all of their homework. Um, and the third idea that we have is for you to use your kids' currency. Typically we all have um, something that our kids really are attached to or just love doing or enjoy doing and we can use that either as a reward or something that they might lose if they're not staying on task and having a really hard day. So just knowing those things and using them um, are actually very helpful during this time. So don't be afraid to motivate your kids as we all need a little bit of motivation here and there. And then next, um, it's just really great to be aware of your child's learning style because um, we all know that we learn differently and different things will be effective. So maybe you try um, you know, something one way and then realize, oh, my kid actually does a lot better when things are hands-on. Um, and so don't be afraid to try new things. And um, now that we're all doing a little bit more hands-on learning to just um, take advantage of different resources where we can try a different style. Um, and, you know, another example might be your child might have a really hard time staying on task while they're reading. So maybe sitting with them and taking turns reading and reading out loud, giving them all of those options are just, just really great and can help them um, as they're doing their studies. And the fifth thing that we have for you is to just not be afraid to fail. Um, I think we just all want to do our best and we all just want to be awesome parents, but the truth is we're all going to mess up from time to time. And so don't feel bad if you are making mistakes or you, sometimes you just feel like, well, that was a terrible day. What happened? And things just fell apart. Um, I would just suggest coming back and regrouping, uh, maybe taking time that night to just talk about maybe what went wrong and where it went wrong and what everybody can do better to get um, back on on track the next day and um, to not feel bad about that because we're all in this huge learning process and we all sometimes feel like we're floundering. So so just don't be scared to try something new and if it doesn't work out, that's okay too. And lastly, we just wanna encourage you to really be there for your kids. Um, that's really the main thing they need is they just need your love and support during this time. They just need to know that they can be secure in you and, um, 
and just to lavish your love on them. And I, I know you're all just awesome and great parents and care so much about your kids and just want to see them succeed. But just remember um, just how important your presence is in their lives and just how much they do still rely on you. Um, even our high schoolers, um, how much they still need you and to just remind them daily how much you love them and are there for them. So I hope some of these tips you found helpful. Uh, most of these ideas um, actually got from the ParentQ app, which is still a really great resource. I think a lot of you guys are on it, watching videos and finding resources on there. And if you haven't yet um, signed up for the free ParentQ app, I would still encourage you to do that, as um, I think you'll really find a lot of the stuff on there beneficial. But I just want to encourage you and just know how much we're praying for you and that we missed you and can't wait to see you again. All right, bye.